What's going on everyone, how are we doing? So a lot of people have been asking me recently about diversification and investing their money. What should I do with it when I make money from trading or when I have spare cash? So I figured I'd just drop a video and just covering the basics of investing, what you could look to do with your money. And again, I just wanna say this is not financial advice in any way, shape or form. So you wanna get started with investing. You've got some money lying around, you've got money you've saved up, or you have a certain amount of money each month that you could realistically use for better things. Let's face it, if you've got money just sitting there, most of the time we make impulsive purchases and we end up buying things we don't really need. How often have you bought something when it turns up and you sort of go, why'd I buy that? Right, it happens. You always hear about this thing, you know, the rich get richer, and the reason being is they actually invest their money and they use it wisely and they ensure that their money makes them more money. But you're thinking, rather than spending money on impulsive things, you're thinking I should probably invest in this. Now you've probably heard about Netflix, Amazon, um, Tesla, prices all skyrocketing due, during the pandemic. And people will say to you, you'd have tripled your money if you invested five years ago. Now, unfortunately, we can't go back five years. What we can do is we can look at how we can invest our money now to ensure that we are actually making money on it. But this whole investing thing seems complicated, right? How do you get involved in investing? What do you invest in? Is my money safe? Is my money secure? Is there a risk? What do I do? All these unanswered questions. And before you know it, you're like, oh my God, brain fog. I'm just going to go and spend it on those nice pair of shoes. So let's break it down. So I want to get started with what happens to our money over time. The simple matter is our money over time loses value, right? It's as simple as that. If it's sitting in a bank account, it is losing money every year due to inflation. Inflation is set to rise to around 8% during summer of 2022. Now it is set to potentially go back down, but just take that in for a moment. 8% means that if you have say a thousand pound in a bank account right now, next year it potentially could be worth 8% less. Every year inflation means that the purchasing power of our money decreases. For example, in the USA, a cup of coffee in 1970 was around 25 cents. In today's prices in the USA, a cup of coffee is now $2.70. So just for context, I know it's a long period of time, but you can see how that cup of coffee is now considerably more. Just like those of you at school, you might have bought the Freddos, you know, they were like 5p. They're no longer 5p. Why? Because of inflation. Same as Mars bars, same as drinks, everything will rise. Now the problem is, if we have our money just sitting there doing nothing, although it's nice, long term it's depreciating in value. I have, let's say, a thousand pounds and you stash it under your mattress or you put it in a shoebox, what it means is that it's decreasing in value over the next 10 years. It will no longer be worth that thousand pound in that current day and age because inflation has made everything more expensive. Essentially, putting your money in a bank account is literally like stashing it under your mattress or putting it in a shoebox. It isn't making you any money. Essentially, what this means is your money's worth less and over time, you're losing money. Now, you're probably gonna say, oh, Al, don't worry, mate, I've got a savings account. Now, yes, but understand that most savings accounts nowadays do not compete anywhere near where inflation is. So you may make some money, but it's still not enough to ensure that that thousand pound remains a thousand or becomes more. So I just wanna to touch on what is an investment. An investment is essentially something that puts money in your pocket. Now, most people are gonna say, ah, property's where it's at. Yes, property's great to get into. Buying a house is quite annoying. The biggest issue being that you do need quite a lot of money up front to actually front that mortgage. Remember, managing a rental property takes some work. You have to look after tenants, you have to look after boilers, you have to look after any issues, you have to ensure that the property's full, you have to clean it. There's so many things and it basically becomes a whole role in itself and a whole bunch of admin that none of us really wanna be taking care of. Now you're probably thinking, okay, so if only there was a way to do this whole investing thing without having a load of money. That brings us to index funds, which 80% of my portfolio is now within and I do have a small portfolio in crypto, which I am looking to slowly diversify more into. But please, please, please understand if you are looking in crypto, please stop buying the dip because every mentor in the world is telling you to because right now you will be broke, you'll be on OnlyFans, you'll be busking your ass because some Donny kept saying buy the dip. Get educated on that, please. We are slowly coming into levels where we could look to buy, but that's a whole different video. Remember, don't just listen to Mike down the pub, bought a Bitcoin and now is going to the moon. Everyone I remember last year saying Bitcoin 100K, where's it at now? It's not 100K. Please, please understand that investing, you do need to get solid education. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this is not financial advice. I'm just giving you my views because it's a question I'm asked a lot. Graham Stephan, one of my favorite YouTubers says, investing in index funds is the best, safest, and easiest way for people to get invested into something and have an investment strategy. So now you're gonna say, oh, what the hell is an index fund? Now I know a lot of you might know what it is, but if you don't, it's pretty simple. You basically have the fund, and then you have the index. A fund is basically a way for investors to pull their money, and then the fund manager gets to invest it however they like. For example, if 100 people invest money into a fund, that fund can then use those 100 people's monies to invest in different companies, such as Google, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, 
you name it. As an individual, you don't have to do anything. You just trust that their knowledge is gonna look after your money. This is why it's important to figure out who to invest with, as of course, with anything, there are a lot of scammers and people out there that essentially tell you they'll make you millions, but in the reality of it is, is they're not going. Please do your due diligence. Also means you don't have to figure out which companies to invest in, they do it all for you. And this is great because then you're essentially not just investing in one sole thing, you're investing in multiple things. So if one does have a bad quarter or a bad year, the others may finish in a, neg in a positive, right? So if one's a negative, the others may be a positive. Diversifying into different asset classes as well reduces the risk of you losing your entire portfolio. Many people are quick to put all their money into one thing. And if that has a bad, bad period, you can lose a lot of it, right? And obviously again, it's not ideal. You have to remember though with investing, no matter what, it's crucial that you do get education. Please remember that. Now the fund manager may take 1% of the returns um, as that's what keeps them in business essentially. But again, when you're reading in all of this, they will give you the, the brief rundown of what the costs are, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a broad spectrum of what a fund is. An index fund is a special sort of fund that tracks the performance of a stock market index. A stock market index is something like the FTSE 100 in the UK or the S&P 500 in the US or the NASDAQ 100 in the US. Now, if we use the S&P 500, for example, this tracks the 500 best performing companies in the US. So if you look at the overall performance of the S&P 500, i.e. what all the companies in it are worth altogether, that gives you a pretty cool idea of how the US stock market is performing overall because these companies make such a huge proportion of all the companies in the US. For example, if we look at the graph, we can see there was a dip in 2008 with the financial crisis, and there was a bit of a dip thanks to COVID. But overall, the general trend is very much positive. Now, of course, we are at all time highs, and of course, with anything, you don't always just want to keep buying at the top, because of course, we may come back down and, and sell off. Now, you have to understand, that this is a long-term investment as well. And like anybody says, the best time to get started is now. Of course, the best time to get started was 10 years ago. And you may look at that graph and go, oh my God, if only I got in after COVID, I would be flying. Yes, you would. If you didn't, don't dwell on it. Now's a good time to look at getting involved. So that's the S&P 500 index. Now, if you look at getting invested in the S&P 500 index, which I myself am invested in, you're putting your money in, you're spreading it out amongst 500 companies. If you put a hundred pound, for instance, in the S&P 500, you'd end up investing a certain proportion of your investment into Apple, a certain proportion into Microsoft, a certain proportion into Google, etc. Et so we're investing a little bit into the each of the biggest companies in the US. So why is an index fund good? Well, they're very easy to set up for number one. They don't take long at all. You don't have to spend time worrying about picking and choosing particular stocks. It gives you a huge amount of diversification. Remember, you have 500 investments. If one of them performs bad, you still have 499 investments. Index funds have very low fees as well because they are passively managed, opposed to the beginning point where we said about someone managing that capital for you at all time. Research also shows that index funds tend to return a higher return on investment than something like a hedge fund. Basically, simply put, index funds are a great way to get started, especially if you're a beginner and you're not a professional investor. Of course, there will be people out there that can invest into individual stocks and they do great on this. But if you're someone that just wants more of a chilled approach and you want your money to actually make money in the long run, then an index fund is great. As Warren Buffett said, if he had 100K to invest, he would simply throw it in the S&P 500 and forget about it. This is what I myself have been doing since early last year, around sort of March, February time last year, I started sticking money each month uh, into S&P 500. My portfolio is up. However, like I said, I have continued to invest month in month out and some of the recent investments, of course, are dropping off somewhat because we are at all time highs. For me, it's the easiest way to get started of investing. Okay, so you're saying index funds are the best way to get started out. And essentially, if I don't need the money anytime soon, then the best thing I can do is look to reinvest that, right? Exactly what I'm saying. So you're gonna ask, who should I use? How do I do it? What's the crack, right? And it's really, really simple. The biggest answer to when you should start investing is simple, now. There is no better time to get started than now. Assuming all of your high interest credit cards, loans, whatever it may be that you have is paid off. There's no point starting investing if you have tons of debt, believe me, because all you're gonna wanna do is take that money out of the investment and pay off that debt because each month you're struggling to live. Get rid of your debt first. Ensure you've built an emergency fund. Provide a minimum of, I would say personally, six months to a year. Some people would say three months at minimum. Make sure you have an emergency fund. Don't just start throwing all your money into an investment again because you're gonna be wanting to take that investment out. And you have to remember, these are long-term investments. Now, I know obviously in the trading world, some people might be like, ah, oh, 10% a year is not a lot. But believe me, if that money's just sitting in your bank, why not make eight to 10% a year on it? Ensure you don't need the money in the next three to four years, i.e. I wanna buy a house. Now, of course, you can withdraw this money at any time, but you have to remember, in order to actually see the effects of the compounded growth, 
It's not gonna just be month one, month two. So don't just be sitting there every day watching it if it goes up, if it goes down. It isn't like trading, it is more of a long-term investment. And you could say it was if you were doing some kind of position trading with trading where you're sort of weekly levels to weekly levels or monthly levels to monthly levels. This is very similar to how the index fund stuff works, right? So please don't sit there every month freaking out if it goes into any negative equity. And if it goes into profit, also don't be like, oh my God, I've got to take that. Remember, this is money that you're investing in the long run. I believe the numbers were the other day when I was looking, if you're investing 400 pounds for the next 10 years on top of a grand initial deposit, something like 66 grand returns in 10 years. It's better than just having it in the bank account doing absolutely nothing. Don't check my maths on that, but it was around that. If you can pass all those tests, then I would recommend starting looking to invest. Simple as that. If you can't pass those tests, focus on an actionable plan on how you can get those things you need to sort, i.e. credit card, debt, loans, whatever it may be. If you are saving for a house, get that out of the way first before you look to invest. And please don't overstep the mark. Only do what you can afford to put in. Don't break yourself for this. Even £100 a month is better than nothing. But if you're someone who's sitting there with 20, 30 grand in the bank and you've got no clue what to do with it, why not look to invest? Please do the education and research first, but this is a video that I cannot explain how many people ask for, so I just figured I would share what I do. Remember as well, the longer you invest your money, the more it compounds, and as Warren Buffett would say, compounding is the eighth wonder of the world, so please ensure that you are letting the compounding effect take place. It's very easy to see some profits and go, oh, I'm gonna take that out, I'm gonna buy this new shiny object, but remember if we go back to the beginning of the video, we tend to waste our money on things we don't actually need. So if you can invest, remember you're investing in your future and that's so critical because it's overlooked and it's not talked about enough in things like schools and when you're growing up as a child, all we're taught is become an employee. And it's as simple as that. And me having kids, I'm trying really, really hard to educate them on other aspects of life that we don't get taught about until you get thrown in the real world and you go, hang on a minute, I never knew any of this was a thing. So you're like, oh, all right, I'm gonna invest 100 pound, I'm gonna try it. What do I do? So first things first is find an online broker. You can usually search in your country for the best online brokers for index funds. Ideally, you wanna invest in one that lets you invest in index funds with low fees. I myself personally use Vanguard. You also have Moneybox, which is again, very similar to Vanguard. Moneybox is an app you can download on the uh, Apple Store, Google Store. And again, you can set it up to take weekly payments, monthly payments, payday boosts, round up so it'll round up if you're spending like 72 pound and 90 or round it up to 73 pounds stuff like that and that'll just take a direct debit each week or each month whenever you set it and again you can just invest that into what you want in that one i actually have i'm invested into the s p 500 i'm invested into the FTSE 100 i'm invested into some property on there and uh, technical companies as well. So that one I've kind of diversified a little bit more. Vanguard I am simply in the s p 500 and again like I say, I'm not saying this is the GOAT. There are plenty of other things you can invest in. For me, it's very simple. I can get money, put it in there and let it do its thing. If you have any other suggestions or you have any personal companies that you're using, please feel free to drop it in the comments, especially if you're from different countries that perhaps don't use or allow Vanguard or, or Moneybox. I'm not sure. I know with trading brokers, America's quite strict on who you can use, so I'm not sure if it's the same in the US. Um, so if you know anyone, please feel free to drop it in the comment. Vanguard is one of the oldest and most reputable companies in this industry. They're the first people to do the whole index fund thing. And obviously you can invest in the S&P 500 index directly through that. Now you're probably asking, Alb, I love you dude, but I just wanna get some more information. Where can I check it out? Look, the best thing you can do is check out YouTube, Google, blog posts, articles, obviously you can tell the difference between scams and not scams. If someone starts saying to you, invest in this company, it's returning 100% a, a month, run, because it's probably a joke. If it is and you lost out of money, my bad, but realistically, if someone's making 100% a month, there's gonna be a catch somewhere. Um, like I say, there's Graham Stephan, he's got a great YouTube channel, um, and he really goes into depth about a lot more things around inflation um, and what our money's doing, etc. So I'd highly recommend checking that out. Is somewhere I've looked. I also just did my own research online. Like I say, Google and the internet nowadays is brilliant. You can literally find anything you want if you actually look. But like I say, own personal experience, if you're like me and you just wanna have a very simple setup, Vanguard's great. There's no affiliation. You'll see I've got no links. I'm not plugging no one. Simply just, as always, sharing what I do. People ask, I try and deliver. Moneybox is another one. I've only been using Moneybox for a couple of months. It got recommended to someone in, um, by someone in the community. Um, and I figured I'd check it out. So far, it's been great as well. Uh, like I say, we are at all-time highs. I believe we've we've started to sell off quite a bit, so we could start, it could be a great time to buy. 
Um, but yeah, if you like this video and you're interested in more investing tips and things and etc. etc., I will do my best to deliver those. So please let me know in the comments. And yeah, I hope you all have an incredible rest of your week and I will catch you in a bit. Peace and love, guys.